we are at uh, iit hyderabad uh, lab uh, and uh, this particular machine is a uh, raman spectrum spectrometer and the today is 27th of uh, february and in uh, on in, on this date only 27th february raman has announced his uh, discovery of raman scattering to a press conference which was published on next day newspapers and that is how the national science day it celebrated now the raman scattering is basically when any light falls on some material then it scatters that is why our sky is blue and uh, at the sunrise sun is uh, reddish and all that so this is a very natural phenomena of scattering and uh, most of the things that we see with our eyes is also through this scattered light but in this normal scattering the wavelength of light which is incident and wavelength of light which is scattered remains the same so that's the kind of uh, normal scattering now in the raman's experiment what she discovered that uh, in certain certain kind of liquids if this light is incident and you study the scattered light then uh, <coughs> the scattered light has a different wavelengths and so it was a kind of a different scattering totally different not known at that time that this kind of scattering is also there so hundreds of liquid samples with different chemical compositions so uh, he tried and it was confirmed that this uh, this uh, special kind of scattering in which the wavelength changes is is there and uh, very interestingly the wavelength not only changes uh, on the upper side it also changes on the lower side upper side uh, is uh, still understandable because if something some light is going with a, a shorter wavelength the energy is more and then uh, you that material absorbs it and, and scatters it so a lesser energy emission is natural but uh, emission emitted scattered light having a larger energy as compared to the incident is something very di different so that kind of things is there now in this particular machine that you see here the lasers are uh, nowadays it's done with laser uh, raman did not do with lasers that time lasers were not there so from here you have a uh, power supply and the laser laser torches are there you can put many torches of different wavelengths so that laser light that comes through this so whatever is inside this chamber and here you put your material liquid or solid or whatever you want to study that you put here and that laser light falls on it gets scattered and that scattered light is again captured here and then it is taken inside where you have a grating the purpose of grating is if uh, the grating receives light of different wavelengths then it will deflect it in at different angles so you exactly know it there is no mixing after this grating so you exactly know what kind of wavelengths you are receiving in the scattered light and then this uh, all information which is detectors are there you no know, electrical signals come in this uh, this this computer and then it makes on all kinds of analysis and shows us this kind of spectrum and what is this spectrum that you are seeing it is the only the wavelength at which lot of scattered light is coming the incoming radiation for in this particular example this incoming laser has been selected at 532 nanometers but you can see this is 500 written here 550 written here this middle point is 525 and it the peak is slightly left of it is slightly less than 525 and here you can read actually this is 522 so the scattered light has a wavelength of 522 nanometers whereas the incident light was 532 nanometers this is called raman shift okay and uh, this is uh, plotted uh, one by wavelength the difference of one by wavelengths so that is how it is uh, done and through this kind of information that shift depends on the chemical structure of the of the sample all right 
So through this shift, you are going, you are peeping inside that chemical and you know all kinds of molecular structure information hidden there, which can be revealed by this kind of a spectrum. So it's a very, very favorite techniques for all kinds of chemists and now biologists and, uh, and uh, industrialists so that they know what kind of molecular structure is there in their objects and what kind of uh, effects it will be keeping. So that's about this. Happy Science Day. <laughs> Happy Science Day.